My name's Angelo, and welcome to We Want Picks. Jacob and I are going to walk through the entire UFC Vegas 44 Font vs. Aldo fight card. We are going to give you our opinions and breakdown on every single fight, their DraftKings value, and who we think should or should not be in your lineup. Before we dig in, go to wewantpicks.com slash DraftKings. We have a free DraftKings league with free contests every single week. And if you're a member of this channel and you win that league or win that contest, I'll send you 50 bucks. 50. We've upped it from 30 to 50 members only. So click the join button under this video, become a member, and try to win that free money. Let's just jump right in. So we'll start with uh, Luis Smolka. He's the favorite. So we have Luis Smolka versus Vince Morales. Two fun come forward strikers with a ton of volume. Uh, the difference between the two of them is Luis Smoka has no power, but he does have wrestling. Vince Morales does not have wrestling, but he has a ton of power. This is a fun fight. I've got a bet on Luis Smoka to win money line. Eighty five hundred dollars is probably a decent value. What do you What are you going to do here, Jacob? What do you think of the eighty five hundred dollars? Well, I might be. I honestly might be changing my mind because if you look at his points in his history, I think he's going to win the fight. And when he wins the fight, it looks like he scores a ton of points. So uh, I might have to reconsider this because I, I I was scared of the the power from Vince Morales, uh, but I like Smoko's ability to maybe wrestle to get more points. Uh, which it seems like in his wins, at least two of those, he got two, yeah, take three, down one, three, and the other two, and then so, this was um, a first round knockout, so he didn't even need it. Right, so uh, it's something to reconsider. It's definitely something to consider once you see that for sure. Well, and and the reality is, Luis Smoka, yes, he does not have the power his opponent has, but let's pull up Vince real quick. But he has a chin, a ridiculous chin. So his power, like the power should not be an issue for him. He should be able to just take whatever he gets. Um, Vince Morales, I mean, in his wins, he's not scoring a ton of points. He's winning decisions. He's not worth the money. We're both on the uh, Smoka side anyway. So Smoka at $8,500 seems to be a solid play. Then let's jump in. This was just added. He's a UFC debut, so we'll have Vandera on the screen instead. We have, um, I guess they changed the fight order here. So we have Jared Vandera, and he's fighting Mirzakhanov. So Jared Vandera is a massive human being. He's a true heavyweight. He started his career with a grappling background. If you look at all of his fights before the UFC, he's taking people down. He's beating them up from there. Then inside the UFC, he was matched up with Romanov, nasty wrestler. Spivak, nasty wrestler. And people have just pegged him as a striker because in his fight against Tafa, he put up 121 significant strikes and looked like a genuine striker. And don't forget, Tafa's a nasty striker. Big, heavy-handed striker. And Jared Vandera just smoked him. So now his opponent, Azmat Mirzakhanov, is a light heavyweight who has very real power, but he's fighting at heavyweight. He's just not cutting any weight. And he's got short power punches. He is a good wrestler, but, you know, I'm on the Jared Vandera side. That's a big risk to take. A little light heavyweight with power in his hands and decent wrestling trying to take down a – look at – I mean, his nickname's The Mountain, for Christ's sake. I think it's an uphill battle. I bet the over on rounds. But as far as DraftKings are concerned, I actually don't know what to do because uh, Azamat Murzakhanov is super live for a knockout in any fight. But Jared Vandera is a monster. What do you think, Jacob? Uh, yeah, I'll keep it quick. Uh, I think he gets absolutely dominated, so I would yeah, not play Vandera. Yeah, so you're obviously like heavy on the other side here. So I'm not going to have Vandera in my lineup, but um, I did bet the over on rounds. If you want to chase the knockout and get those points, then then obviously go the other side. The problem is, you know, listen, he's, he's a UFC debut at $9,300. He's a light heavyweight fighting a heavyweight. That's that's an, It's literally an uphill battle. And, you know, he's the mountain, so it's an up-mountain battle. Ba -ba Boom. Nailed it. We can shut this thing down, man. I killed that. Then we have Chris Grootsmacher versus Claudio Puelas. And this is an interesting one because Grootsmacher, in his last fight, everybody thought he was a bum. He is like, every fight that he loses, he stopped. This guy sucks. And then in his last fight, everybody fell into that trap and he came out there. 
He weathered the Hafa Garcia storm and then won that fight, put up 85 points. He was only $6,700. This fight is a closer fight. He's actually the very, very slight favorite, I believe. Um, and Grootsmacher, listen, he's a gritty inside-the-pocket striker. His takedowns are not great. His takedown defense is not great, but he is super tough, and he will fight in the pocket and throw heavy. Claudio Poilis is uh, he's 25 years old. He's got a decent amount of experience, but he's a grappler. He uses his kicks really well. Listen, in this fight, I think Poilis wins. Poilis is my pick. Chris Kutzmacher is super tough, has heavy hands, and Poilis has a negative striking differential, which is an issue. What do you think of this fight, Jacob? Oh, I mean, uh, this is a pick as far as money is concerned. So what do you think? Yeah, I don't I don't like the Grootsmacher side. I I, I kind of like the Pueyo side. I think he's going to be in my lineup just because I think he's able to get the takedowns that he needs. And when he gets those takedowns, he, listen, he embarrassed uh, Jordan Levitt, and Jordan Levitt was submitting everyone. And he actually said in an interview that he wants to come at this fight and be more aggressive. He, he played it safe last fight. He didn't want to tire himself out he could have finished that fight anytime he said he's coming out he's taking more risks he's going to try and finish the fight so you know i'll, I'll take that all day because you see his points there are pretty solid and a lot of those are decisions so if he's looking for a finish i'm playing that side no i i agree with you so i'm on the playlist side as far as the fight pick is concerned obviously he does get hit pretty often which concerns me but four takedowns four takedowns two takedowns those are five points each this guy puts up points and wins and i think you know we we've seen um, Chris Grootsmacher be on the wrong side of those sort of grappling decisions. And this may be another one uh, for him. So I'm on the playlist side and, and I think there's good value there at $8,000. Let's take a look at the, either the most boring fight on the card or absolute fireworks. We have Alonzo Menafield versus William Knight, two ridiculously athletic, explosive, powerful strikers. The knock on Alonzo Menafield in the past was that he has no cardio. But if you look here, he came out, he beat Ed Herman, a veteran, obviously on the downslide, but a veteran. He, he took a three-round decision from him. He had one takedown, 93 significant strikes, a little bit of control time, and he put up okay points. But the moral of that story is all of a sudden Alonzo Menafield has cardio, and Alonzo Menafield with cardio is a threat. His opponent, William Knight, big, heavy-handed striker, but we have seen him on the wrong side of sort of a physical fight. So Alonzo Menafield, $8,700. That's that's like, honestly, that's not a terrible price because look at the numbers he puts up in his wins. Obviously, if he does 74 at that price, I'm not going to be thrilled, but it's not the worst. But most of his wins are by knockout, and it's possible he can knock out William Knight. My only concern here, if we jump to William Knight, is William Knight has stupid power. Alonzo Menafield was knocked out by, um, what's his name? St. Pru. St. Pru. So we know his chin can get tested. William Knight hasn't had that luxury yet. So what are your thoughts here? Two wild strikers who both now might have cardio. Yeah, I think uh, Menafield honestly, is, is the worst play here because in my mind, for him to win this fight, he has to make it slow. He has to make it boring. He has to make it technical. You see what happens. If you get in a firefight with Knight, he, he he knocked the guy out this four on one, like a short check shot. And we saw, you mentioned the St. Prue knockout. It was kind of a flash knockout on just like a little short, a little check shot uh, on, on Menafield. So I think the, the safer play, honestly, is, is William Knight to try and chase a knockout. I think there's going to be that firefight. I think I might play the William Knight for $7,500 because, you know, that first round finish is, is a big one and, and he can get it done at any moment. And he's got the grappling, right? So you saw him getting takedown and control, but he has offensive grappling. Maybe he uses that, gets a couple takedowns. Um, I just think for $87 from Menafield, for him to win, I don't. it, it seems like he's just going to have to make it boring. So uh, I don't love that play. Yeah, I mean, I'm on the I'm on the Menafield side as far as the pick is concerned. Right, and I, and I think Menafield's probably going to win, but I'm just chasing points here with Knight in my lineup. That's just the way my lineup's probably going to be built. Yeah, well, and DraftKings-wise, um, William Knight is probably not a bad play because, you know, if you look here, he's got four takedowns in that camera fight, a straight-up knockout in the Fabio Charant fight. So Cameron and Charant were on the wrong side of that, and William Knight put up some solid points. So I see what you're saying. It, it just pick your side in this fight, honestly, because if you think Alonzo Menafield is going to come out here, beat the brakes off William Knight, he's worth 8700 bucks. They kept him out of the 9000 range. But William does have that power. Alonzo has been knocked out in the past. $8,700 is like right at the line of money that I would spend. So 
That's an interesting one there. You still with us because you're frozen on the screen. Oh, I'm here. Can you right. hear me? Well, you're frozen on the screen, but we can hear you, so we're good. Then we have Cheyenne Vlismas, formerly Cheyenne Bays, fighting Future Mallory Martin. Mrs. Lines. Is my screen still frozen? Nope, you're good now. Uh, um, let me show the ring I got for her. Oh, go ahead. I didn't get okay. it. I was literally was like, Ryan, you got to let me know what you want. So this idiot get a prop ring for a couple <laughs> of laps. Anyway, we got Cheyenne Vlismas versus Mallory Martin. Cheyenne, busy, busy striker. Super busy striker. Um, not the most technical striker in the world, but crazy busy comes forward, coming off that awesome win over Gloria DePaula. First round knockout in under, uh, what is a quick win? One minute? Under a minute. So she got those quick win bonus, 135 points. That's incredible. She's fighting Mallory Martin, who's also a striker, does not have that same volume, but she does have power and she does have takedowns. You are on the Cheyenne side, but they have her at $9,000. Listen, she has two fights in the UFC. She won this one with strikes. She lost this one by being taken down what felt like 2 million times never made any adjustments whatsoever, just got taken down over and over. If we look at Mallory Martin, this woman has a takedown in her last two fights. And if we if we go back, she has fights where she's got five takedowns in them. Mallory Martin puts up some numbers as far as takedowns are concerned. I don't know if Cheyenne, that was a flash in the pan. That was a one-time thing. It was just the perfect takedown over and over or what? What are your thoughts here? You're a big Cheyenne guy, but are you going to spend $9,000 in DraftKings? I would spend to the end of the earth for Cheyenne. To me, she is priceless. You cannot put a price on her. But seriously, about the fight, Cheyenne honestly is too much a wild card for me. Like For $9,000 in DraftKings, yeah, she could probably get a first-round finish, but you've seen her get dominated before by a, a grappler. So, I mean, if you want to take maybe – I guess maybe for like multi lines, you might throw her in one or two or something like that. But she's just such a wild card that I think if you're going to play the side, it's probably the Mallory Martin side, honestly. And I think Cheyenne wins. I think she finds a way to get it done. But for DraftKings, it's probably the the plays to play, play the uh, Martin side. I, I agree. I mean, I mean, you, Cheyenne, if you Cheyenne, I know you're watching. That's nothing. I think you're going to win. I think you can do great. Okay. Seventy two hundred dollars uh, for a woman who's also a striker gets a bunch of takedowns. Um, and has stoppage ability on her feet and on the ground versus, you know, Sh Cheyenne could come out. Th this is going to be the fight. This is where we'll know how good Cheyenne is or is not. So you guys can choose to make that decision. There's no way I'm spending $9,000 on one and one. And both of those fights were extremes. Extremely dominated in one. Extremely, do she was dominant in the other. Like, I, I can't make a $9,000 decision on uh, a person like that just yet we scroll our way up and we've got jake matthews versus jeremiah wells this is another interesting fight this whole card is full of live underdogs and interesting fights you know uh jake matthews he's a well-rounded guy he's got good wrestling he's got good grappling and he's got good strikes he's well-rounded then we have jeremiah wells who everybody thinks is just a wild knockout artist because he has power and he has a bunch of knockouts, but he is a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt, and everybody just forgets that. If you look at Jake Matthews, $9,100 is crazy to me. I mean, yes, he put up some numbers in, in his last two wins, but look at this win. Decision win, 55 points. I mean, he does put up numbers in some of the other wins, but here, here's the reality of it. If I'm breaking down fights, which we've done, and check out the individual videos... Let's go to Jeremiah Wells. The dude had that wild knockout over Alves in like his official UFC debut coming off a long two-year layoff, and he's a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt. A oh, Gracie think, black belt. Daniel Gracie, no less. So I just think That's Jake dad. Matthews. What? What's that? Yeah. Jake Matthews is the more well-rounded fighter because while he's not as good as grappling – he definitely doesn't have the power. He probably has the more technical striking, and he's got the wrestling. But Jeremiah Wells, super live in this, $7,100. He'll probably be in my lineup. I do have a bet on him to win inside the distance, but if it goes to a decision, I'll get my refund. No way I've got Jake Matthews in my lineup at nine, whatever the hell, thousand. No freaking way. Are you going to put – so you agree with that. Are you going to put Jeremiah Wells in your lineup? 
Oh, hell yeah, I am, because he is the lock of the week. And I honestly think he's better everywhere. Maybe the wrestling, you know, Jake Matthews a little bit better, but he's so slick with his jujitsu that I don't think that – I think he can get, negate the uh, the wrestling of, of Jake Matthews. So I, I love Jeremiah Wells all the way. I, I got so many bets on him as well. He's in my lineup for sure. Yeah, so you know, I think way, we're both – The way he loses, and this is not my fault if he does, is when he rushes in, it's chin forward, hands low, so he could get flash knocked out. But at $7,100, I'll take that chance. Yeah, I mean, he's he's so cheap. This whole card, this is going to be an interesting card because there's so many live underdogs. This is the week where all the underdogs win or all the favorites win, and everybody like us picking underdogs looks so stupid. Right. And yeah, Vegas I hate, especially for DraftKings, I, I don't like any of their favorites, really. I had to Draft pick Kings, some, but I don't really like them. DraftKings, way overpriced a bunch of people. Then we have the new fight. We have Brian Barbarena versus um, Darian Weeks. This was just added. This is a new fight on the uh, on the slate here. They literally valued this today. So Brian Barbarena, eighty four hundred dollars, which is a conservative price considering his career. He's fifteen and eight. His opponent Weeks, who has no fights in the UFC, so there's no stats on him. He's five and zero. Oh. He's making his UFC debut. I thought for sure the odds makers and DraftKings were just gonna heavily favor Brian Barbarena, but they didn't. They did their research, and so did I. Watch our individual breakdown if you want more, more sort of information on this fight. But Brian Barbarena is a brawler. He gets in your face. He makes it ugly, and he brawls. Adrian Weeks is a wrestler who strikes. Darian? He's got, what? You said Adrian? It's Darian Weeks? Darian. My bad. I've been I was like, I was like, nah, I've been drinking. Darian Weeks is a wrestler who strikes, and I did this in the individual breakdown video, but when he strikes, and he's got legit power in his hands, he strikes with looping shots. Even his jab is not here. He's not turning it over and pushing it. It's like coming out and around, and the reason I say that is- That's called a hook. It's basically a hook. This is a hook from the shoulder, but anyway- Okay, Jacob, I've managed fighters for 15 years. I just watched you throw that hook. If you're like, please, I'll give you 90% instead of the 10, I'd be like, no, thank you. Anyway, in, in, for the, the sake of your health and well-being and your family, no, thank you. So, Brian Barbarina, in-your-face brawler. Jeremy Weeks, he has those looping shots when he doesn't intend them to be looping shots. That's a half a second too late a lot of times. And when you're fighting a guy like Brian Barbarina who's in your face, he gets hit a ton, which does have me concerned because Jer- or, um, Adri- or, uh, Darian Weeks has legitimate power. I, It's a close fight. This line is absolutely correct. The price is absolutely correct. I'm going with Brian Barbarina. I'm not going to have either one of these guys in my lineup. I'm just not going to do it. There's too many unknowns with Darian Weeks, but I do think Brian Barbarina wins this fight because Darian – is just too loopy. I think he'll be a half a second behind, and Brian will just have more time to make it dirty. Are, are uh, you going to take a take a chance? Because if anybody can get a stoppage, Weeks has power. Are you going to yeah, take I think a chance on that? Play it, it's probably Darian. I think I like him to win the fight, but I agree 100. percent Stay away from both these guys. Too many unknowns. I, I don't know what the weird accent is about, but there there are a lot of unknowns here. It, we have a 15 fight card. There is no reason to force. Barbarina or Weeks in your lineup. There's 15 fights to pick from. Then we've got Zuma Gulov versus Manel Kopp. Zalgas, Zalgas, Zuma Gulov. What's crazy here is he's a big underdog. 6,800 bucks, but I clicked on him first because Zalgas has power in his hands. He's a pretty good wrestler, and he's fighting Manel Kopp. And Manel Kopp is like a nasty striker who sometimes has too much fun and like chooses not to strike and play games and doesn't do what he's supposed to do to win the rounds and win the fights. He's happy to fall behind on the cards because he's having a good time where Zalgas is a heads down. I'm going to do what I need to do. And listen, he's on a bit of a, you know, one and one and two, uh, as far as DraftKings is he didn't lose versus Paeva. Three and two in his and and yeah, he had two takedowns, a little bit of control time. Not it's a like ton. well known that he got screwed in that decision, but still the fancy point still isn't good because he will he will only have got a uh, sixty nine. Yeah, hmm. but the nice. reality is 
I think Zalgas wins this fight. And I think he wins one of two ways. He either gets takedowns, dominates, or can't take down Manel. And Manel is, he's got legit good takedown defense. I think it's at 80-something percent. But if he can't take Manel down, he's going to hold him against the cage and try to take him down and ride out the win. So I have Manel Kopp losing this fight. I've got Zalgas Zumagulov winning this fight. $6,800 I will have him in my lineup. What do you think, Jacob? I'm going to pull up Manel here. Yeah, Zalgas, I think he can win, honestly, on his feet, too, because I think he can have the volume versus the big strikes of Cop, and Cop can be passive enough and, and kind of let him win the, win, the, win the fight with the strikes. But I think he's going to use his grappling. I think he's a great DraftKings play. You know, Cop, every time I bet against Cop, every time I play people against Cop, I always get burned. But, um, you know. How do you I, always get burned? He's always had, he only has one win in the UFC. How do you always get burned? I always get burned. I think I picked him versus Pantoja, maybe, is what it was, so. Yeah, I I just feel like he I feel like he always get burned me either way or the other. So yeah, uh, I'm staying. I I, I want to play Zalgus. I think he's a good play, but I have Jeremiah Wells at seventy one hundred dollars. So I can't. Yeah, you know, if I'm gonna play seventy one and a sixty eight, that means I have to love a lot of big favorites. And on this card, I don't like a lot of big favorites. So I only played one or the other. But I think Zalgus is a good play for someone looking for value. Yeah. So I mean, I'll take. Uh... You know, I'll take Zalgas. He'll probably be in my lineup. Like you said, this is going to be a weird week. I might have like $7,000 left over of my $15,000 budget or whatever it is. So um, it is tricky. Listen, Manel Cop, he has – look what he did in his last fight. He got that wild knockout with like one second left. But look what he did in his last fight. 19 significant strikes. The dude threw 19 total strikes in four and a half minutes. That that's is the first, nothing. That's the first round finish. It was at the end of the round, like oh, with yeah. one second left. Right. It was, it I was mean, like nineteen's two. not nineteen's not like a low number for a round, really. If he keeps that pace, that's less than sixty in an entire fight. Sixty total well, usually strikes. You pick up, usually you pick up pace as a fight. Oh, uh, okay. Usually you pick. Oh, thank you so much for that analysis. Anyway, Manel Cop falls behind on rounds, takes his time. And I think Zalgas is not the right guy to do that with. Let's take I think a Derek look. Lewis landed like 13 total strikes in a five-round fight versus Naganu. Well, that was the worst fight in the history of time. Literally, I think it was like 15 <laughs> or something like that. Then we have uh, Dusko Todorovic, and he's fighting Maki Patolo. This is an interesting fight. We've got two strikers, basically, except Maki will work himself to some takedowns. But Dusko is a legitimate striker. He's got good volume. He's got good power. I say he's well-rounded because he also has wrestling in BJJ. He just doesn't use it very often. The problem, the knock on Dusko is he has no chin. He keeps his head up, his chin back. The knock is his ability to get knocked out. <laughs> this is why we're, we're losing subscribers. That's a joke. We're actually growing like crazy, and thank you all very much for that. So, anyway... Uh, Dusko, he's on a two fight skid, but he is very good. I don't think he should be the favorite here though, because if we leave this, well, first of all, let's look nine points, 19 points. This was a three round decision loss, 19 points. That's bad. That's bad. Three round decision. That's bad. But he did put up a ton of points in that Townsend win. But let's take a look at my boy, Maki Pitolo, really tough. Really good striker with a ton of takedowns. His issue is his submission defense is not world-class, but he does have a lot of takedowns. Let's look at this. Five takedowns against Julian Marquez, 67 points in a loss. He was absolutely going to win a decision before that submission, so he would have been at 97 points in a decision win. And if we look at all of his other fights and we dig into these losses a little bit, these are good losses. Everybody's looking at typology and saying the, the dude is one and four in his last five or good losses, huh? Three fight skid. He is in these fights. He has his moments. Good striker, good power, good takedowns. Look at this. Five, none in that loss against Kinsanganai, but he had a takedown against Stewart, three against Bird. This dude can make it work if he's losing the stand up exchanges with Tudorovic. He can get some takedowns. I like him. What do you think? I've never seen someone be celebrated for four losses before. You act like he was like an undefeated fighter coming in. 
Um, I, I think I've played Dusko in every single of his UFC fights. He rewarded me that first fight. I got burned on the last ones. Uh, obviously, that 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 first knockout, he was just getting destroyed. I think the next fight, he was a little bit scared to get destroyed again. I think he finds a swagger in this fight. I actually think he's going to sub Patoli, so I took a, a little bit of a flyer for him. Like I said, I don't like a lot of heavy favorites, so I kind of chased some points in the mid-range, and, and, and Dusko is one of those guys that um, has like seven first-round finishes in his, in his lineup and can get it done on the feet or on the ground, like you said. So I like him to win the fight, so I like Dusko on this play. But Patoli, you know, because there is a, he is, Dusko is very chinny, and Patoli is a striker, and he could outgrapple him the whole fight. So, you know, Patoli at $7,600 isn't a bad play either. Patolo, and I agree with Patoli. you. Patoli. Well, let's hit the... <laughs> Sorry. It's unbelievable. Let's take a look at Alex Morono versus Mickey Gall. Alex Morono is a guy, we've seen him look amazing. We've seen him look subpar, but he's a very good striker. He is pretty much where he's supposed to be at all times. He blew the brakes off of Cowboy Cerrone on a short notice fight. He's taking on Mickey Gall. Mickey Gall is a hot and cold guy. He is coming off a really nice win that a lot of people didn't see him getting except Jakey Boy in his last fight picked him. But um, I think, personally, Alex Morono is better than Mickey Gall pretty much everywhere except Jiu-Jitsu, but he's good enough to not get submitted. Better striker, more experience. I think he's just straight up better everywhere. I'll trust that he's going to do what he's supposed to do, the problem is $9,500 is obscene. It's obscene. That's ridiculous Amanda Nunez money. That's obscene. What do you think of this? No, I 100% agree. Uh, and I think Alex is probably the better jiu-jitsu practitioner before people yell at us. He's like a second-degree black belt. But the way that Mickey Gall uses his jiu-jitsu in – MMA, fight, jiu MMA yeah. is, I think he's he's a little bit slicker with it, right? I think Alex is probably more ju technical jujitsu where Mickey can use his wrestling and get to positions a little bit better than Alex. Um, that's why I think he's if he gets one more rear naked choke, I think he like ties the record for most rear naked chokes in the UFC or something already. I think he's at like five or something like that. So uh, I agree, ninety five hundred dollars is crazy. If you want to take a flyer at Mickey, I love Mickey. I just don't love him enough in this fight to uh, yeah. to. Uh, to even pay that whatever amount he is on here, 68, 70, $6,700. Because Alex is, uh, should be better pretty much everywhere else. So, um, I agree with you on that. Yeah, no, no way. I'm, I'm, uh, I like Mickey as well. I just, I wish he didn't come into the UFC when he did. He came in to beat CM Punk, and that's right here. So, this was on Dana White Contender Series. This was coming in against CM Punk, 108 points. I mean, you know, listen, he beat the crap out of CM Punk. He won his last fight against uh, Williams, which a lot of people had him not winning. You did. You picked him to win there. But, you know, he did look good in that last fight. But the reality is Mickey Gall is like – and that Mike, that Mike Perry fight, it was basically Mike Perry. He couldn't get a takedown versus Mike Perry because Mike Perry basically just crowded him, just pressured him, pressured him, pressured him. He didn't like the pressure. Alex can do that same thing because Alex doesn't really yeah. care if he gets taken down, right? Because he's a he's a second degree black belt. He's like, what's Mickey going to do to me? So. Yeah, I like Morono. 0% chance I spend $9,500. Take a look at Chris Curtis versus Brendan Allen. I pulled up Chris first because he put up 109 points against Phil Hawes. Chris Curtis, if you remember, he's a welterweight. He decided to fight Chris Hawes on very short notice, or Phil Hawes. Phil Hawes said, no, thank you. A month later, they actually did it at middleweight. Phil Hawes was winning that fight in the first round. Got the better of the exchanges, was faking takedowns, but not really committing to the fake. Chris Curtis timed it, knocked him out. It was that easy. 109 points. Dude only landed 21 strikes in that entire fight. 22 strikes total, 21 significant. He we landed well, it was like 20 and then a kill shot. And then if we take a look at Brendan Allen, Brendan Allen is a straight up veteran at this point in the UFC. He is a grappler with incredible jujitsu skills in MMA, and he's just abandoned them recently. He's turned into a striker, but he's had success. He beat Punahil Soriano. Punahil, a nasty, powerful kickboxer, and he beat him convincingly in a decision kickboxing win. And he's fighting Chris Curtis, who is a boxer, not a kickboxer, a boxer. We've seen Chris Curtis lose grappling. We've seen Brendan Allen beat people with his strikes, beat people with his grappling. I I freaking hate $9,600, but I don't like a lot of these super expensive people. I think Brendan Allen ends up in my lineup. Are you on I'm the a, other side of this? Yeah. No, I'm 100% with you with Brendan Allen. Listen, I, I think he's going to get in trouble if he tries to outstrike Chris Curtis. I think he comes in and grapples, and if he grapples, it should be an easy 
quick finish for Brendan Allen. And, and like you said, I don't like a lot of the big favorites, so I got to chase points somewhere, especially for ninety six hundred dollars. Uh, he's got to get a finish to warrant that money. But if he goes to the ground, he's going to get it easy. So I, I don't love it, but I got to play somebody. Well, and, and here's a perfect example. So Kevin Holland, two takedowns. Breeze, zero takedowns. Every time he gets a takedown, he subs somebody. He, he he just needs – there was one fight, he got one takedown and subbed. He just, and that's against people that know what the hell they're doing. Chris Curtis on the ground really is kind of clueless. He is no tough offense. though. We watched him. We watched him fight. <laughs> I've mentioned this this fight and this name one million times. But we watched Chris Curtis fight um, Magomed Magomed Sharimov, and he lost a five round taken down over and over. But Brendan Allen is an opportunistic submission guy. So listen, Chris Curtis, you want to chase that knockout? Go for it. it. It paid off last time. Yeah, I'll do. A, I'll do. A, he'll be in some multi lineups for sure. Chris Curtis, honestly, I don't know if he gets stopped, but listen, you, you got to pay for some expensive. If he gets taken somewhere. down, he'll get stopped. Brendan Allen will stop ninety percent of the UFC if he gets him down to the ground. Not Ryan Hall, not Shane Burgos. Okay, we have Leonardo Santos versus Clay not Leonardo, Leonardo Santos. <laughs> in the feature fight of the evening, Leonardo Santos, seven-time BJJ World Champion, seven-time. He is 40, what, 41, 42 years old? He's 41 years old. He's fighting Clay Guida. I don't even need to break down Clay Guida for you. That guy is just the energizer bunny with good wrestling, good striking, okay jiu-jitsu. Leonardo Santos, phenomenal jiu-jitsu, but very technical striking for a jiu-jitsu guy and real power in his hands. Jacob likes to laugh when I say that, but look at this. He knocked out Stevie Ray. That was one single punch. Yes, it was two years ago, but it was one single punch knocked him out. Clay Guida does not possess that power. Leonardo Santos does. Leonardo Santos has the more technical striking. Leonardo Santos has the better jiu-jitsu. The problem is Clay he, threw 12 punch. he landed 12 punches. What are you saying one punch knocked him out? What? You said he let, he knocked him out with one punch. You kept saying it with one punch. Are Most you knockouts serious? are one punch. He landed eleven punches and then bang, one punch. Knocked Every him single out. knockout is a one punch knockout. No, some are TKOs, and it's not just knocked you out cold, walked away, walk off knockout. You Don't get absolutely upset, man. relax. No, I'm going to look at the stats and watch immediately when people just stopped watching is when you made that comment. YouTube has a very. I don't advanced. know why you keep dragging it on. Let's go on with the show. Leonardo Santos is the better striker, better at jiu-jitsu. The problem is Clay Guida's feet never stop moving, and taking a guy like that down is not easy. When you want to take a shot, his feet aren't where they were a half a second earlier. This is a really tough fight. I think Leonardo Santos wins this fight, but we're approaching $9,000 in this price point. Let's take a look. Clay Guida is not the type of guy that you just finish. And you're going to have to finish him to, to be worth almost 9000 bucks. Listen, when he beat Michael Johnson, 80 points. When he beat BJ Penn, 81. That was lock of the week, Michael Johnson, meaning he was lock of the week against Michael Johnson. Yeah, and I picked Clay in that fight too. Marco not Madsen, not this is the one that's interesting though because a lot of people think he won that, but even if you add 30 to this, that's 59 points. That's not a lot of points. And this fight could actually be very similar where it's just a bunch of jab and go for 15 minutes because Leonardo can't take him down because he doesn't stand still. But he'll Leonardo won't be worth the money. And Clay Guida, 7400 bucks. If he puts up 60 points, maybe that's worth the money. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I think uh, Clay Guida, if he fights at a distance, is gonna he's going to find himself in some trouble. I think that Leonardo Santos is the same as, as Mickey Gall. It's a guy that doesn't like to be pressured. And Clay Guida is a guy that can pressure you for three rounds. I think he just got to get in his face, grind him up against the cage, watch for those trips because Santos does have some slick trips and stuff against the cage, and he'll jump on a neck faster than anybody. So you got to be careful with that. But I like Guida in this fight, but definitely not enough to play him uh, um, in DraftKings. So. Yeah, it's an interest, it's an interesting fight for sure. Then we've got Jimmy Crew versus Jeremiah Hill. Jimmy Crew, nasty grappler. His last fight, we just or sorry, Jamal Hill. Jimmy Crew, nasty grappler. We saw his leg just completely shut down in his fight with Anthony Smith. Um, but even with a leg that didn't work. He still yeah, speaking of that, real quick, just a funny story relating to the leg that uh, Jeremiah Wells uh, or Jer uh, Jamal Hill, sorry, Jamal Hill told. He said there's memes going around for Thanksgiving of 
because they're fighting each other with his arm and his leg that yeah. like people are passing the turkey leg and it's Jimmy Crute's leg and then people passing a wing and it's Jamal Hill's uh, arm and stuff. Kind of funny. Uh, it, it is funny though because Jimmy Crute, his leg shut down in his last fight. J- uh, Jamal Hill, his arm just snapped basically and is dislocated, not broken, but it snapped in his last fight essentially. So anyway, Jimmy Crute, nasty grappler. $9,200. He actually will be in my lineup. I'll, I'll just get there that quickly. I mean, look at this. Three takedowns against Anthony Smith with a leg, with one leg, one leg. Eight takedowns against Olin Jacek. And obviously the other ones, he didn't need a takedown against Alvi. And Serkinov, you know, Serkinov is Serkinov. So, listen, I, I like Jimmy Crew. He will be in my lineup if we look at Jamal Hill. Sweet Jamal dream. Hill. I picked Craig against Jamal Hill. Dan did too. We were very, I mean, that was plus 200 or something crazy. We were really on the right side of that one. But if we take a look at his other fights, he does put up some decent numbers because he does get knockouts and TKOs. But if you dig into that deeper, he does not have that raw knockout power. These are basically TKOs because his volume is very impressive. Jimmy Crew actually has more power than Jamal Hill. So I think Jamal Hill will frustrate Jimmy. It'll probably go two rounds, but I think Jimmy will end up with a couple of takedowns and a stoppage. What do you think here? I actually like Jamal Hill in this fight. Um, I think that he jumps on the jab early, and you saw Andy Smith just destroying Crude's face with that jab. He could, get, could not get out of the way of that jab. That's why he went for the takedowns. Um, but because he went for those takedowns, and I'm looking for people in my lineup, I got to buy another person that's expensive. So I'll take the grappler and Jimmy Crew. He's going to be in my lineup. Um, you know, if if I'm a betting man, I, I'm I think I'm going to probably we play literally the, are betting men, right? I think I I am playing the the Jamal Hill side <laughs> of this, but uh, for for DraftKings with the with the grappling ability to takedowns um, and the submission, if you want to play MMA, or, uh, MR, MMA, what, what am I saying? MMA, yeah. um, what math? MMA math. Sorry, uh, if you want to play MMA math, Crute sub Paul Craig, and then Paul Craig sub uh, Jamal Hill. So there you go. There you go. Look at that math. Um, anyway, I'm on the Crute side. Sounds like Jacob is too, and the takedowns, five points each. That's a ton. Uh, Rafael Fizayev or Rafael Fizayev or Rafa, whatever you want to call him, former coach at Tiger Muay Thai. And if you don't know, Tiger Muay Thai is like the premier Muay Thai gym on the planet. Um, nasty right, striker. Right, right. What'd you say? That's where I trained out of uh, two, yeah. a couple of years. No, absolutely. Absolutely. Show your muscles. We have Rafael Fizayev, and you froze while drinking that drink. Rafael Fizayev first, Brad Riddell, two nasty strikers. They actually trained together for a very short period of time. This is an interesting fight. I, all I'm going to tell you is pick your side. That, that's all I can do is tell you to pick your side. If we take a look at Fizayev, let's look at his last fight. 72 points. That's basically in two rounds because in the third round, he did literally nothing against Bobby Green. Bobby Green put a beating on him. Fizayev had no gas whatsoever. But then he's got a stoppage or two and then a couple of decisions. He does have power. Nasty Muay Thai striker. So far in the UFC as a 100% takedown defense. If you look at Brad Riddell, he does have takedowns. Five against Dober and one in every other fight. He is undefeated in his last five. He's riding a nice little win streak. Brad Riddell, listen, I picked Fizayev to win, but Brad Riddell is like speaking to me. Like just something about that is drawing me towards him. Pick your side in this fight. The upside on Riddell is he can get some ta- some takedowns and score some points. The downside is I think Fizayev is actually the better striker, and this should be a striking fight. What do you think, Jake? I'm trying to listen. I'm trying to see if somebody will speak to me. Nobody speaks to me. Um, I, I like, uh, I like, uh, you know, prior Riddell in this fight with, with the grappling ability. If you're going to play the DraftKings side of it, because I think the striking is pretty much a, a wash, a worse. Um, but I'm going to stay away for this in, in DraftKings because I want to watch this fight and enjoy this fight. So pick, pick your side and, uh, and ride with it. Yeah, this is a hard one to take a firm stance on. And what's interesting is DraftKings took a firm stance. These odds are literally even, but DraftKings straight up said Fizayev is the favorite. And they gave him a couple hundred bucks. Like, they they made him the favorite. And then we have the main event of the evening. We have Rob Font versus Jose Aldo. Jose Aldo, again, this was – Jose Aldo opened at, like, plus 150, worked his way down – to plus 120 so almost a pick them 
But DraftKings took a stand, made him 7800 bucks. But the reason I pulled him up first is I want to look at the Munoz fight. He put up 76 points in that fight, and it was just a ton of strikes. 114 total strikes. Every single one was scored a significant strike. And he was just ahead of, of uh, Pedro Munoz that entire fight. Just ahead of him, landing. Just He absolutely dominated that fight, bell to bell. He did similar to Vera, but... You know, the Vera fight was not as impressive. The Munoz fight was very impressive. It looked like Jose Aldo from 2010. It was really nice. But let's take a look at Rob Font. He's the favorite. Rob Font is my pick. I think Rob Font's jab is just going to be in Jose Aldo's face that entire time, frustrate him, and not let Jose Aldo do the counter striking that he wants to do. And just look at these numbers. I mean, in, in his wins, Rob Font puts up legitimate numbers and and honestly i didn't realize till i scrolled down how long he's been in the ufc this is impressive he's a another northeast guy here but he's riding a nice little win streak the kobe garbrandt win was very very impressive he rocked cody a few times i know you guys are hating on him for that saying cody's got a glass jaw he didn't knock out cody he's got no power but i would say cody's jaw like those were power shots cody just seemed to hold up did he not like yeah, he got stunned you, a couple times. I think he was surprised in himself that he was yeah. able to eat those shots. So you'd say it's not necessarily that Rob doesn't have power. It's just that Cody's chin, for whatever reason, held up in that fight. Yeah, those uh, those shots would have knocked out probably half the people they would hit. Yeah, I mean, I, and a lot of you are saying, oh, he didn't knock out Cody and Cody's chinny, so he's he doesn't have power. Listen, he has power, but more importantly, he's got volume. I mean, look look at the strikes, 183. Obviously, 33, that's a knockout, so that doesn't count. But 100, 118. He's going over 100 in all of his decision wins in three-round fights. Five-round fight, Jose Aldo, who tends to gas. I've got Rob Font winning $8,400. I will spend that money. But this may be a double-up spot. What do you think about that? I completely disagree with the double up spot. I like Aldo in this fight, but I think this is honestly could be a very boring fight. I think they're both going to be looking for big counters when they want to throw big punches. I think Font's going to come out and usually he likes to pump that jab out, but with Aldo's leg kicks, I think he's going to be tired or be scared to get his leg chewed up early and be off that jab and, and kind of play it safe in those first couple rounds to kind of feel out what Aldo's game plan is going to be. So I can see a lot of stopping and staring at each other, just kind of both just pumping out jabs that aren't really hitting. Um, and, uh, and unless Aldo wants to grapple, I just don't see, I don't see either one of these guys really getting finished. Um, maybe Aldo late if he gets tired, but for me, for DraftKings, I know for a five round fight, you should probably play somebody, but I think I'm going to stay away completely from this. Um, and, and me personally, I don't like the double up play. Yeah. It, you know, I, I won't double up either, uh, because you know, last week I went six and oh, and now I'm chasing six and oh all the time. But, um, you know, I've done that three I, times. I disagree. I disagree with the notion that it, that um, it's not a good double up spot. I do think there's some value in potentially doubling up. I think they may go at it. I don't think there's going to be a lot of. I, think, I mean, if you if you if you think they're going to go at it, I don't think either one of them is going to get finished. So if you really think that they're going to go at it, I think it's going to be more of a stalemate. But if you think they're going to go at it, I agree that it's probably going to go to the distance. So there, that would uh, warrant that that play. Yeah, I, I think they'll go at it. And because I think they'll go at it, I got to go with Font because Aldo fades. Rob Font has more volume. And I think, you know, that'll I just... I sent that video. Aldo is looks like he is ready to rumble. He is and he ready. literally said he's never wanted the title more than now. I, I mentioned this in our breakdown. Glover 2.0. I'm calling it now. Glover 2.0. I think he gets the title. I mean, that's just so demeaning to Glover. He's the 1.0? What? Glover's to make... the 1.0? Yeah. He's the original. He's the OG. The OG old champion, so I guess Randy Couture doesn't exist. Come on, get, just get your shit. What together. are you talking about? That is exactly. You want to edit this and, out? No. So That's embarrassing. Rob Fon is my pick to win. I guarantee, as soon as they touch gloves, my heart will be rooting for Jose Aldo. You want to touch gloves? Okay. Anyway, we on picks.com slash DraftKings. If you watched this long up until this point, join our free DraftKings. This is the audience. If you are a member of our channel, which means you click the join button under the video, you will get $55-0 if you win our free DraftKings League. We'll see you guys on Saturday. Thanks for watching. See you then.